Hello and welcome to Aula 3 or bonus class 3 on corporate finance and portfolio management. So the intention of these classes is to help with the pre-course reading to be done before the CFA Level 1 prep course starts for the December 2018 exam. So we've already had two classes which you can find on YouTube, bonus class 1 and 2, and this is the third one. Before watching the bonus classes, you should watch the Getting Started class. Okay, that is also available on the YouTube channel, on the SHP Financial Training YouTube channel. Okay. Oh, good. Um, so we can see here that we've had um, on the third bonus class, it's the 19th of May today. I'll just get my pen working. Here we are, Corporate Finance and Portfolio Management. We've already talked about getting started, study plan, ethics, quants, and FRA, and now we're looking at Corporate Finance and Portfolio Management. Okay, so this is the pre-course reading, which is critical, critical. It needs to be done before the start of the course in order to put you in a good, strong position and make life easier for you once the course has started, because you will, during the course, focus on the concepts which are most important to the exam, core concepts. Okay, so you can see, we've got the study sessions here, CFA is split into 18 study sessions. The reading assignment, there are a total of 58 reading assignments. Some of them have been selected for pre-course reading. How important the reading is, the title of the reading, suggested hours in total during your entire preparation process, and the number of pre-course reading hours that we are recommending. And then the bonus class in which that pre-course reading is covered. Apologies for the noise we're having. We're under going through a refurbishment project here at the school. Okay, um, so <laughs> core material and most highly examined topics are covered. Concepts are covered, covered during the prep course. So you want to do this factual reading. The pre-course reading is mostly factual reading or non-core material at home study, and ideally it should be done before the start of the course, so that you are free during the course to focus on the most important concepts for the exam. Okay. So what, as soon as you sign up for the prep course, we will send you the study plan, which has this list of pre-course reading and the timetable for all of the classes. You also get the Getting Started Guide, which explains to you how to, what to focus on in the pre-course reading, and we will support you with any questions that you have. There will also be a quiz, a little test on the pre-course reading during the first class of the course on the 2nd of August, so come prepared. Okay. So. Let's see. Four-step approach to the readings. How should you focus on the readings? Well, number one, review the learning outcome statements. They look like this, LOS, learning outcome statements. There are approximately 500 learning outcome statements in the CFA curriculum, and they are split into by, by reading. So you might have three to five, maybe even 10 learning outcome statements to each reading. And there are 18 readings. Okay, then work through the program reading, see if they're program reading. <laughs> you don't need to read everything. Focus on the learning outcome statements. Answer the questions at the end of the reading within 24 hours of completing the reading. That is to check that you've retained the knowledge. It's very easy to forget everything. So make sure you do practice questions that will, that will make the knowledge stick. Okay, and then return later to go back to questions you got wrong or to do additional practice questions. Um, so, you should mark the questions you got wrong so you can go back and make sure you're doing them right now. Okay. All right, so corporate finance is study, is study session 10, 7% of the exam. We have two three hour classes in the course, plus the exam debrief the, on the questions. So, we, you will do exams, two exams during the course. One is a halfway there one, and one is a final one. In the final exam, there is corporate finance material, and you will cover, we will cover in the debrief, a debrief of the questions on that that people found hardest. And there is also a revision class with corporate finance content in it, covering the most important concepts and doing lots of practice questions. So two study sessions, actually. <coughs> study sessions 10 and 11, readings 34 through to 38. And you can see the highest importance readings are corporate governance and environmental, social and governance Government, governance factors and introduction, and capital budgeting as well, okay, which is investment appraisal, choosing between investment projects. 
and we have cost of capital, so we've got cost of equity, cost of debt, how to figure it out, how to work it out. Uh, measures of leverage, so we have leverage through fixed operational costs as well as from fixed finance costs through debt and working capital management. And there's a bit of overlap here with FRA, financial reporting and analysis. So you need to know some key ratios from financial reporting and analysis. So the only pre-course reading here <coughs> is just one hour to be spent on reading 34 on corporate governance. Um, and you can spend a bit longer than that if you want to, but the point is to be keeping up with these bonus classes so that you are reading the material that we are talking about, and that means you'll get the coverage you need to before the course starts. Okay. And then portfolio management. <coughs> 7% of the exam. So in portfolio management, 7% of the exam, there are there is one study session to be session 12 and five reading. Okay. And the pre-course reading is set on reading 39 and 40. So portfolio management and overview, what is it, how does it work, and risk management and introduction. So they are introductory in reading these two. So very good to read as pre-course reading before the course starts to give a bit of context before we go into the class on portfolio management. So we've got one class on portfolio management, plus exam debrief, plus revision class. Then okay, the other topics, risk and return. Uh, written with some parts, parts one and two, and basics of portfolio planning and construction. And I'm going to give you a little bit of an overview, an overview of equity, which you should be reading before the next class. So the actual, the idea behind these bonus classes is that you do the pre-course reading, and then any questions you have, you ask me about them in the class. So if you can read about equity before the next class and then send me your questions in our group, in our WhatsApp group. To join the WhatsApp group, please contact SHP and ask to join the bonus classes. You can do that online. There is a, a form to sign up for the bonus classes in the cell, in the reservation form. Okay, um, so pre-course reading. There is more pre-course reading on equity because there's quite a lot of factual information. So we've got reading 44, market organization and structure, how do market equity markets work, what are the stock exchanges, the most famous ones around the world, and then we've got reading 46 on market efficiency, so we've got weak form, semi-strong and strong form efficiency, we talk about that in class two, but it's good to have a bit of background first. Overview of equity securities, so there are lots of features and characteristics of different types of equity. So we've got equity and preference shares, the different types of preference shares, for example, you need to know about the characteristics of both and introduction to industry and com company analysis, which you may have done some work on before. For example, Porter's five forces, you need to understand those. Okay, and so there we go. And then equity valuation, this is extremely important reading. We cover this in class, so you don't need to worry about that pre-course reading. But this is a kind, an example of the kind of thing that you want time to focus on once the classes start, because it's critical for the exam. So as much as you can do with the pre-course reading, the better will free up your time to focus on the most important concepts during the class, during the course. Okay, so keep up the studying and please send us your questions. All right. And I do have a little bit more detail. Um, so corporate governance, corporate governance reading. You should be able to describe corporate governance. These are the learning outcomes statements. So lots of learning outcomes statements here. So describe corporate governance. What is it? <laughs> describe a company's stakeholder groups and compare interests of stakeholder groups. Describe principal agents and other relationships in corporate governance and conflicts that may arise in these relationships. Describe stakeholder management. Describe mechanisms to manage stakeholder relationships and mitigate associated risks. Describe functions and responsibilities of the board of directors and its committees. Describe market and non-market factors that can affect stakeholder relationships and corporate governance. Identify potential risk of poor corporate governance and stakeholder management and identify benefits from effective corporate governance and stakeholder management. Describe factors relevant to the analysis of corporate governance and stakeholder management. Describe environmental and social considerations in investment analysis and describe how environmental, social and governance factors may be used in investment analysis. Okay, so lots of factual reading here, lots of things to find out about. Um, 
They're not concepts that we can add much value to in the course, so that's why it is set as, these things are set as pre-course reading, because it is just a case of looking up some definitions, understanding some factual procedures, um, nothing, no, no, no technical concepts here that you need to apply. You just need to know the rules. Okay, so set that as pre-course reading. Reading 35, capital budgeting is covered in the course. Cost of capital covered in the course, measures of leverage covered in the course, working capital management covered in the course, and as I mentioned before, it's also included in FRA, financial reporting and analysis. Portfolio management and overview is pre-course reading. So describe the portfolio approach to investing. Describe types of investors and distinctive characteristics and needs of each. Describe defined benefit and defined defined contribution and defined benefit pension plans, which is also in FRA. You need to understand the difference between those two. So defined benefit is when the employer defines how much the employee will receive when they retire. And defined contribution, the employee bears all of the risk. They, they contribute a fixed amount, or the company contributes a fixed amount for them, and there is no guarantee as to how much pension they will receive. Describe steps in the portfolio management process, and describe mutual funds and compare them with other pooled investment products. Okay, so very actual reading here, which is why it's set as home study. And then risk management and introduction is also home study. So what is risk management? Define it, describe features of a risk management framework, define risk governance, and describe elements of effective risk governance. Governance, explain how risk tolerance affects risk management, describe risk budgeting and its role in risk governance, identify financial and non-financial sources of risk and describe how they may interact, and describe methods for measuring and modifying risk exposures and factors to consider in choosing among the methods. Okay, so <clears throat> you need to be able to respond to all of these LOSs, learning outcome statements. You need to know what they are asking you, what they're getting at, you need to know the answers to them. You need to master the learning outcome statements for success in the exam. Okay? And again, these are quite factual, easy things to read, so we don't cover them in the course. What we do cover in the course is portfolio risk and return, how to calculate it, how to interpret it. And we've got part one and part two, going into system, systematic and non-systematic risk here. and basics of portfolio planning and construction, which we cover in course two. Okay. So market organization and structure, this is home study for equity. So what are the main functions of the financial system? How are assets and markets classified? What are the major types of securities, currencies, contracts, commodities, and real assets that trade in organized markets, including their distinguishing characteristics and major subtypes? Types, so lots of factual reading again. Describe types of financial intermediaries and services that they provide. Compare positions an investor can take in an asset. Calculate and interpret the leverage ratio, rate of return on the margin transaction, and the security price at which the investor would receive a margin call. So margin, we actually cover on the course. Okay, so don't worry too much about this section. Compare execution validity and clearing instructions. So we do talk about different types of trade in the course, and we compare market orders with limit orders. So there are some parts here that we will go over in the course to make sure you have fully understood the concepts. Um, and so these three, learning at F, G, and H, are covered in the course. Define primary and secondary markets and explain how secondary markets support primary markets. Describe how securities, contracts, and currencies are traded in quote-driven, order-driven, and broker's markets. So that also is covered in the course. Uh, describe characteristics of the well-functioning financial system and describe objectives of market regulation. Security market indices is covered in the course. You need to know how to calculate the return from different types of indices, so price, market, and equal weighted indices. Market efficiency, so we talk about weak form, semi-strong, and strong form market efficiency in the course. Okay, but this is set as pre-course reading, so you get context, get a bit of background and a bit more information about it. Overview of equity securities is also pre-course reading. Okay, so describe the characteristics of types of equity securities, describe differences in voting rights and other ownership characteristics among different equity classes, distinguish between public and private equity securities. Describe methods for investing in non-domestic equity securities, for example, through American depository receipts. 
compare the risk and return characteristics of different types of equity securities, explain the role of equities in the financing of company assets, distinguish between market value and book value of equity securities. Book value is just the net asset value in the financial statements. Equity market value is the price times the number of shares in issue. Compare a company's cost of equity is accounting return on equity and the investors require rates of return. Okay, so some interesting con content that can pre-course reading. Introduction to industry and company analysis is also pre-course reading. Okay, so explain the uses of industry analysis and the relation of industry analysis to company analysis. We have to look at the market as well as the company when we are analyzing the company, the context that it operates in. And compare methods by which companies can be grouped, current industry classification systems, and to classify a company given a description of its activities in the classification system. Explain the factors that affect the sensitivity of a company to the business cycle and the uses and limitations of industry and company descriptors such as growth, defensive, and cyclical. Okay, the different descriptions for companies. Explain how a company's industry classification can be used to identify a potential peer group for equity valuation. We need to get comparable companies. So from which industry should we get them? Describe the elements that need to be covered in a thorough industry analysis. Describe the principles of strategic analysis of an industry. Explain the effects of barriers to entry, industry concentration, industry capacity and market share stability on pricing power and price com competition. Describe the industry life cycle models. Classify an industry as to life cycle stage and describe limitations to the life cycle concept in forecasting industry performance. Compare characteristics as representative industries from the various economic sectors. Describe macroeconomic technolo technology technological, or demographic, governmental, and social influences on industry growth, profitability, and risk, and describe the elements that should be covered in a thorough company analysis. Okay, so a lot of things to cover here, but again, that is pre-course reading because it's quite factual information. It's quite easy to read and to understand. Okay, and what we will focus on in the course is equity valuation, the concepts and basic tools. Okay, so a lot of uh, work in this area that's really critical for the exam because you Got, you have to get questions on this because it's so important in finance. Okay, continued concepts and basic tools. Okay, so that takes us to the end of today's bonus class. So if you haven't already, please watch the Getting Started class, okay, which happened in March 2018. That's getting started for the December exam for people who sign up early. The sooner you sign up and get started, the better. And then this is the third of five bonus classes. Okay, so just taking you back to the beginning. Okay, our next class will be on equity on the 16th of June. Okay, so hope to see you then. Bye.